My sheep know my voice, and they'll not follow the voice of a stranger. These are the words of Jesus. Hi, I'm Hermes Falco Jr. with Revive Explosion, and I want to welcome you today as we talk about something extremely important for any child of God. We're going to talk about hearing God's voice. I believe that God wants you to learn how to hear His voice to the point that you know the voice of your Father and you're not deceived by any other voice that tries to speak to you. Jesus was very clear when it came to His voice. He wanted His disciples to learn how to discern His voice. And He wants you, as a child of God, to learn how to discern His voice as well by His Holy Spirit. I believe that every child of God is able by the Spirit of God to learn how to hear His voice. I believe that the voice of God is not so mysterious that you can never hear Him. I believe that you as a child of God can have access to the voice of your Father. It has always to do with intimacy with Him. The more you spend some time with someone, the more you spend time with someone, the more used to his voice or her voice you will be. If you have been watching this program for a while and you've been uh, watching the different episodes, you already know my voice. You have, a, you have a, uh, some type of knowledge about my voice. Some of you may like my voice or some of you may not like my voice, but that's not the point. You know a little bit about my voice. The fact is that you know because you've, you've spent time, whether by being in person in a meeting or whether by watching TV or by the internet, you've known me as I speak. So if someone comes in here and just speaks something, you will be able to discern that that's not my voice. Why? Because you've spent enough time with me to know the, the sound of my voice and to know the way I talk. Now let me tell you something. It is the same thing with God. When you spend time with your Father, when you spend time in His Word, when you spend time in His presence, in worship, you're going to begin to know and understand His voice, and you'll never be deceived by any other voice. There are three voices speaking in the world today. That's what I want to say, number one. There are three voices speaking in the world today, and we must be aware of those. Number one is the voice of the Spirit, the voice of God. He is speaking. It's not that He's not speaking. He's speaking today. He's speaking, and, and in this program, in the next episode, we're going to cover the ways that God speaks. But He speaks through His Word. He speaks through dreams and visions and prophecies and, and um, words of knowledge. He speaks through inner witness. So many different ways. I'm going to cover that. But He is speaking. Number two. The voice of man. What is the voice of man? It's the natural voice. It's the voice of the media. It's the secular voice. It's the voice that speaks out of the natural mind. Even your, your natural mind has a thought. The Bible says that the natural man cannot discern the things of the spirit because they are spiritually discerned. So the natural man has a voice, has a will, and... People are constantly speaking in the world today. They're releasing their opinion. They're releasing what they think about something. And the voice of man can be heard, whether through media, whether through conversation, the voice of man. And number three is the voice of Satan, the voice of the devil. The serpent spoke in the Garden of Eden, and the serpent is still speaking today. The Bible says in the book of Revelation that the serpent is the old serpent that deceived the whole world. That means that serpent of old times is still speaking today on the earth. And we must be very aware of, of her voice because it's deceptive. It's full of hatred, full of evil, full of evil intent. It's disgusting. I hate the devil. And let, let me tell you what, he's still speaking. Sometimes he's speaking through people. Sometimes he's speaking through negative voices on your mind and oppression and in different ways that the devil speaks but we must be aware that there are only three voices that speak on the earth 
which are the voice of God, the voice of man, and the voice of the devil. God may even use angels, but even angels, as they speak, they're speaking under the direction of God. So that's why they are included as the voice of God as well. And of course, there are evil fallen angels and demons that speak by uh, the direction of Satan. So we must be aware there are three voices speaking today. And as a believer, as a child of God, born again by the Spirit, I need to learn how to tap into the voice of God and which ways He speaks. Now, I don't want to limit God to say that He can only speak through one way or the other. I know He's huge. He's God. He, before there was ever something, He is God. He is the Father of eternity. So, like, I don't want to limit Him and say, here is the box, this is how God does it. No. However, through the study of the Bible, through the study of the Word of God, I can learn some ways, some most common ways that God speaks. And that's what I want to cover with you today. Uh, as we continue on speaking about the voice of God, I want to uh, make sure to tell you that throughout the program, you're going to see all some miracles that the Lord has been doing in the nations. Recent miracles of this year, the Lord healing the sick. We went to Peru. We saw a tremendous move of the Holy Spirit in Peru. We're going to be seeing some miracles from Peru and also from America and different um, you know, parts of the world. But So stay tuned for that. But I want to cover... What, I, um, what I'm going to talk today to you concerning this, it's in my book, Manifesting Kingdom Power. I wrote uh, this chapter that I talk about the voice of God. You can get this book on our website, reviveexplosion.com or Amazon. The number one way that God speaks to His people today is through His written word. The written word. Jesus, when He was in the wilderness... And Satan began to tempt him. The way that Jesus responded was always through the word of God. There was not a special move that he did. There was not a special prayer that he did. No, the way that he responded to the voice of the devil was through the word of God. Anytime the devil even tried to use the word against him, he used the word back to, to, to the devil. And that's how he overcame the wilderness. And, and Jesus said, Men shall not, shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Let me tell you something. The Bible was written throughout many years, many centuries, through different authors, in different backgrounds, in different times. But all was inspired by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit breathed inspiration upon the authors of the Bible uh, and he was the main author of the Bible. That's why it fits well together. And the reason why he spoke through his word is so that we can have the word of God as a foundation. So anytime you expose yourself to hear the word, you're hearing the voice of God himself. Anytime you begin to read the word, you're reading the voice of God speaking to you through the written word. And so this is one of the primary ways that God speaks to his people today is through his written word. We live in a generation nowadays that tries to despise the word of God and say it's just the Bible. But listen, the Bible is the living word of God. The Bible did not change. The word of God is powerful to change lives and to uh, transform uh, humankind and to heal the sick and to cast out devils. The word of God is powerful. If we have faith today, it's because of the word. If you believe in Jesus today, it's because of the word. If you uh, pray today, it's because of the word. So anytime that we begin to get exposed through the Word of God, we are actually exposing ourselves to hear the voice of God. But it's just one of the ways that God speaks. Never despise the Word. Anytime that you go to a church and, and the, the, the Word is being preached under the anointing of the Spirit, you can actually tap into the voice of God. And you can actually hear the voice of your Father. I want to go on a short break right now. And as we go, we're going to see clips of miracles. And right after that, I want you to stay with me with the whole program. Right after that, we're going to come back to talking about the voice of God. And I want to pray for you. And we're going to continue that in the, in the next episode. So let's go for these clips. And I'll be right back with you. Hi, I'm Hermes Falco Jr. I'm here uh, in Edgewater at the Edgewater House of Prayer. 
and I, I was ministering here this weekend with my, my mother, Maria Falco, and uh, we got a wonderful testimony here with uh, this Joan Laurie. Joan Laurie, this wonderful lady. Uh, the Lord just did something for her this morning and this evening as well. We want to share a little bit. You can talk out loud for, for them, the viewers to hear. What happened to you? Yes, amen. I'm 82 years old and I've suffered with back pain for 25 years. I, I was a nurse for 40 years and uh, I had automobile accidents and a lot of damage to my spine. And the Lord touched me this morning. He healed my back. He healed my ears. I had... I was hard of hearing in my right ear, uh -huh. and it's open. Praise the Lord! And oh, yeah. he gave me my yeah. the joy back. You were full, full of joy. joy from my innermost being. Sister oh. Maria touched my uh, my belly, and I started man. laughing. <laughs> Praise the Lord! Oh, and it man. just came up from from inside of me. It was Amazing. just the Lord. And I've just been rejoicing all day. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you. And so for 25 years, you had like both disc on your back. Yes. It was yes. painful. Yes. Right How right. bad was the pain from one to 10? Oh, sometimes the pain was nine or 10. I mean, I was on and what did you feel? What, what did you feel go through your back this morning? I just felt just a warmth and a, just a comfort. Wow, that's amazing. And the ear popped open as well. And my ear so, so we give Jesus the glory. Amen. He's moving in America. Yes, yes. And, and if people only believe, they yeah. can see the glory of God. And we Amen. praise Jesus for everything he's doing uh, right here. Hmm. Uh, we love you guys. God bless you. Edge hope. Edge hope. <laughs> Hallelujah. Se ha quitado el dolor. ¿Cuánto tiempo da dolor está aquí? ¿Cuánto tiempo? 15 años de dolor en la espalda. No podría pararse sola. ¿Está bien? ¿Qué no podría hacer que dolía mucho? Bien, 
God, isn't it amazing to see God moving in the nations? I love the Holy Spirit and how He works as people respond to the voice of God through the preaching of the Word. 
They can experience heaven on earth. They can experience a miracle. And maybe you're, you're also there watching and you believe in God for your own miracle. I want to tell you, I want to pray with you and for you that the Lord may touch your life. I believe that as we hear the voice of God through the preaching of the word, we actually hearing the voice of God through a vessel, a human vessel. And I believe that's what preachers are. True preachers of the word are anointed by the Spirit to carry the voice of God into the earth, releasing the voice of God to people. Now, anytime you hear the word of God and you, uh, you begin to read the word of God, you're actually hearing the voice of God in written form. That's what the Bible is. Remember, before the Bible was written, it was revealed to man and it was uh, spoken to man before it came into the written form. Now, anytime you begin to read the Bible, you're actually reading the voice of God and the thoughts of God in written form. That's how powerful it is. So don't ever underestimate the power of the word of God because it's, it's the word of the living God. Now, as I said before, uh, there's the Logos Word and the Rema Word. The Logos Word is the entire Bible. And the Rema Word is the specific word for a specific situation. So, just remember this. When you begin to read the Word, you're actually reading the voice of God. You're actually being fed by the voice of God. So, Jesus said that, my sheep know my voice. And one of the primary ways that you can hear the voice of God is through the Word. And... I, I see a lot of Christians sometimes they say, I don't, I don't hear God's voice. I cannot understand God's voice. Now, my question to you today is, are you reading your Bible? Because if you don't, if you don't read the Bible, that's basic of God's voice. That's the basics. And God revealed his voice through Jesus Christ. God revealed his will through Jesus Christ. Anytime you begin to see the life of Jesus, you're actually seeing the, the, the very life of God in the flesh. He's the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. So if you want to hear the voice of God, you can actually hear him primarily through his word. So don't be a Christian that says, I want to hear the voice of God and going to read his word. A lot of Christians are saying that and God is telling them, you got your Bible closed, open your Bible that I may speak to you. Open your Bible that I may give you revelation. Open your Bible that I may give you impartation through my word and then I'm going to give you understanding and revelation for your current situation. Now, for those of you who are trying to hear the voice of God for your own life, for your career, for your marriage, for your family, for whatever uh, purpose or dream that you're, you're facing, I advise you to to pray into that. However, if you open your Bibles, you're not going to see that John is going to do medical school in the 21st century or that uh, um, um, Bob is going to be a, uh, a lawyer and then uh, Peter is going to be a pastor in Russia, something like that. No, you're not going to see that in the Bible because it's not in the Bible. Now, what the Bible will do, the Bible will give you a foundation in wisdom and, and discernment so that you can learn how to hear the voice of God today. And then whenever you hear, you'll begin to acknowledge that it fits in line with what the Bible says. So the Bible is our foundation. But right now, uh, I want to pray with you. If you're hungering to hear the voice of God, if you're hungering to encounter His voice in a wonderful way i want to pray for you at this moment that the lord may release his spirit in your life in your mind in your home father i pray in jesus name for everyone watching i pray that they will re receive an impartation by the holy spirit to hunger after your word lord i pray for supernatural hunger for your word like never before i pray that they'll they'll be so thirsty they will open our Bibles and they will receive understanding and revelation. Lord, I pray that anybody who is hungering to hear a voice, they will be touched. I pray that they will open their Bibles and I pray that as they open their Bibles, that they will receive an impartation by your Holy Spirit and revelation. They will not read by the eyes of the flesh, but they will read by the eyes of the Spirit. And that as they read, they will 
be changed and transformed according to your image. Lord, I thank you in Jesus' name for your Holy Spirit giving revelation. I thank you for touching the sick, touching those who are oppressed, and I thank you for releasing the power of your word into people's lives and minds and families in Jesus' name. I thank you for anointing in Jesus' name for your glory. And I, Lord, we give you praise in Jesus' name. My friends, it's vital. If you want to hear the voice of God, go first to your Bible and begin to learn and understand. And some of you will know Jesus through the Word as well. I want to remind you also that those of you who, who love our ministry, we want you to partner with us in what we're doing in the nations. People are being saved. People are being delivered. People are being healed. The poor is receiving food. Children are being blessed. People are learning more of the words through the online Bible school. We have an online school that you can participate in. You can partner with us in prayer and in financial giving. Everything that we do requires finances in order to be done. This program requires finances to be done. Everything that we do requires finances. And we encourage you to be part of it. Go to the website in your screen, to the mail. Partner with us today. You can give from anywhere in the world through PayPal. Just be a blessing. And we want to be a blessing to you. We love you. We appreciate each one of you. And I want to see you in the next episode. God bless you and see you soon.